Today we're going to be continuing my amazing trip I had in Italy. The first episode I shared with you was where I took you to my travels inside of the factory of Parmigiano Reggiano, the incredible wine scenery, and of course, let's not forget about the Italian food, baby. Today we're going to go inside of a place that is a source of great pride for Italians, and for very good reason. I'm also eating at one of the most exquisite restaurants I've ever been to. And everything starts off with this. Located near the Providence of Parma in Italy, this location is beautiful. It's like you're back in time the way things used to be. I mean, even the bugs there are different. I mean, what is this? Yeah. But back to the location. This place has history. You can tell but what you're looking at right now. I mean, take a look at this. They also have a Michelin star restaurant in here, which you know I'm going to be trying that real soon. But I was really there for the Culatello cellar. As soon as you walk in, the first thing you notice is the smell. Think about smelling history. Honestly, to say it's cool is an understatement. They also have Parmigiano Reggiano in there. And obviously, this one is quite old. So this is what they look like when they're fresh. And then this one, 20 years old, Parmigiano Reggiano. But let's talk about the Colatello. What is this? Well, it is one of the most prized salami in Italy. It all started in the 13th century, but first documented in 1735. We're talking about almost 800 years ago. I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old. One of the most interesting things for me in that room was that the mold that was originally produced with Culatello in the 13th century is still alive today. And here's the reason why it's still alive. You see the old mold from the Culatello transferred to the new Culatello, producing this incredible and unique flavor that is impossible to replicate anywhere else. And I understand why it is such a prized cut of meat. Walking around this place is like you're in a movie. But listen, you're brought right back to life with the smell. It's like a mixture of mold mixed with moisture, crumbled up, have a marriage with salami smell. It's just a very unique smell that goes inside of your brain and you never forget. But if you're like me, you're probably thinking of two things. How much does it cost and how does it taste? The prices range anywhere between $500 to $1,000. That is some expensive salami. This thing better be real good. One thing I had to do is to taste it. And for that, inside of the restaurant, we went. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of this restaurant. Okay, fine. Antica Corte Palavincina? 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 That one. This one. Let's just say the Culatello restaurant. Now this is fancy. So much so that the menu has no price. You know what I'm saying? Now here's the interesting things about Italians. They have wines for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, and let me tell you something. There's nothing wrong with that. Why are you doing that? I saw a TikTok. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like a TikToker, everybody. You know what I'm saying? But enough about the wine because the first course arrived. This shell looking thing was kind of like a poached egg without a yolk in the middle. I don't know how to explain what that was. This next one was red cow's fondue with sweet potato cream. And the following one, little vegetables with something truffle. You know, I'm not bougie or fancy and these flavors were quite new for me. I've never experienced anything like it. I'm not saying that it was bad. No, that's not what I mean whatsoever. I'm just saying the combination of flavors is quite unique. So that was a very, very different type of hors d'oeuvre that I never had before. And then this arrived. Now, wow, you might be thinking, what is that? Well, it is butter. It is homemade butter. I have never tried anything like this. This butter is the best butter I've ever tasted. But right after that, check it out. What I've been waiting for all day long. Take a look at it. Look at the ratio between fat and meat. What does this remind you of? Yes, you are damn right. We're talking about the Wagyu of salami. As soon as I took my first bite, here's how I can describe. It is strong, just like Wagyu, it packs a punch. Super salty, porky flavor that is quite unique. It also tastes similar to how the cellar smells. That aroma really goes through the whole Colatello and you can taste it in every single bite. Here we have the next dish. Crispy purple potato, black truffles, and fresh vegetable from the garden. Those little crispy things that you are looking at right now are pan seared culatello. As soon as I took a bite, let me remind you real quick that we are in a nice restaurant. So my reactions had to be constrained and at the same time, I did not want to embarrass my wife, but it was incredible. I just couldn't show it like my normal way. What are you doing in there? <laughs> 
but however I was not mentally prepared for the next dish. You see what he's holding on his hand looks like a balloon, but it is the bladder of a pig. And inside there he's making an amazing pasta. So after cooking it in the bladder he immediately opens it up and put it on a nice dish, stir it a little bit, plate it up and add some shaved dry colatello rye on top and this is what you're left with. So this is the pasta that was cooked in the bladder of the pig. Now, even though this sounds weird and one of the most craziest thing you've ever heard in your life, uh, what's important is how does it taste? Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Let's give it a try to the bladder pig pasta. Mm. Such a delicious bladder. So good bladder. <laughs> I don't think the bladder does anything. I tell you one thing. Pasta does taste delicious. Mm. Pasta is delicious. Bladder? Not so much. Now let's think about it. Decades ago, this technique was used as a necessity. Today, not so much. But I love the show aspect of it. I love keeping the tradition alive. But the pasta was amazing. Not to say the same for the next dish. Take a look at this. I came to Italy, I ate frog legs. So frog legs is quite popular in Northern Italy. If you've never had it, it's quite similar to chicken with a hint of fishiness. It's good, but this next dish is off the chain. It's piglet with prawns and spinach topped up with some soy sauce. And this one was a real treat. Next up, we got a huge selection of cheese. You know me and cheese are best friends, so I gotta try them all. And yeah, they were all amazing. Now that was supposed to be our dessert, but then this happened. So the reader brought in the menu for the dessert, and one of them was for a 100-year-old recipe. I'm gonna try the 100-year-old recipe. It was a peach that was cooked in red wine and sugar, and obviously flambe for the show, and served with ice cream. Let's give this a try. Very interesting. Um, it's of stuff. Well, uh -oh. it's good. And that was an incredible way to finish the meal. So in essence, being there in that location was really something special. I've never thought that I would have the opportunity not only to go to Italy, but experience something like this. And most important, that restaurant was incredible. My trip to Italy is not over yet, because the next one, we're gonna be talking about Ferrari. Oh yes, I had that quite unique experience. I had a professional Italian Formula One driver teaching me how to drive, and he told me that I drive like a that video is coming real soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.